yeah, you heard it there. The boys are back in town. This is Point Park Pens Talk, otherwise known, affectionately known as 3PT. I'm your host, Nick Brulansky, is always flanked by Nicholas J. Horwat to my right. I'm here and there's no one in between us. There is no one in between us because we are sans Jordan the Jobber, Jordan Slobodinsky today, as it's probably going to be for the most of our summer sessions that we do here, mainly because he works a night job. And, and he likes in, his sleep. And he's in Lock Haven anyway, so... Yeah, if anything, we might get him on the phone. I know everybody loves hearing Jordan <laughs> the Jobber talk, but uh, so far you're just going to have the two experts here, Nick and Nick, talking. And we're going to talk a little bit of Penn's hockey. We've discussed that we're probably going to do this bi-weekly. Every so often, whenever we can. <laughs> whenever we can, because uh, like Jordan, we both also work. Um, so we're going to see how often we can do this as of right now, bi-weekly. The last time we left you guys... <laughs> The Penguins were in a heated playoff rivalry with the Flyers. And unless you live under a rock or have something severely wrong with you, that went well, but the following series didn't. And we lost in six games to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Washington Capitals. It was their year. Finally, they got their year. <laughs> yeah, it kind of hurts me to even say that. It's kind of crazy to even say that because forever I always thought Ovi would be... The big old, the great zero, as in zero Stanley mm-hmm. Cups. But I guess, I mean, when he won, I was not happy about it. But honestly, good for him. He, S- seeing all the celebrations since then, I think he's made up for it. It's perfectly okay now. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, at the World Cup when it's Kovlachuk, Malkin, Ovi, and Alex Radulov just hanging out in a skybox. Malkin and Radulov have been friends forever, though, that I, I've noticed. That what? is true. Yeah, they're, they're always with each other. But let's get to some actual Penguins hockey, as in... Signing and free agency because we still have three months until the start of the regular season. And it's the off season. What a time to be alive. Oh yeah, we we have a lot to talk about today, which is actually nice, but I'm not sure how much we're going to have to talk about, you know, in future episodes considering free agency has now started and, and it's going to die down from here. Uh, from here, probably just whatever we do with Alexia because that's unsettled. Yeah, we will talk a little bit about Jamie O, Big Rig, and uh, also... And his press conference yesterday, Rutherford said, yeah, we're probably done with free agency, but, you know, there's trades there. You're going to see some big trades. And and he he said it jokingly, like, oh, around the league, basically letting us know that he's definitely not going on a trip anywhere anytime soon. He's going to be in his office trying to make a trade. And we'll talk about one possible trade that a lot of people are talking about. But let's start off with who or what happened the week before free agency. They got to work. Everyone around the league kind of got to work. I was real confused when I started people like verbally committing to teams, which I personally don't like that. Yeah, we had a little bit of the Jack Johnson was verbally committed, basically. Yeah. That wasn't really a surprise come yesterday. I, I didn't really like that either. It kind of took out the allure of yesterday. Yeah, like it wasn't I mean, even like... It, minus John Tavares keeping us, quote-unquote, in the dark for his decision that we, quote-unquote, all freaking knew about. Yeah. No, I mean, it was good that he did it that way and actually kept, quit, kept it quiet, because yes, we kind of could have guessed that. But we weren't sure. It could have been anyone. I knew he wasn't going back to the Islanders, that's for sure. Yeah, that was for sure. Um, sorry, Dave Fichetti, who is in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if Dave listens to this, we'll see you in a couple months, bud. But your team's probably not going to be good this year. Hey, the Islanders got a good new head coach in the Stanley Cup champion, Barry Trotz. Yeah. And a new GM, so things could look up for the Islanders in a way. It's a lot easier when you don't have Garth Snow there, that's very... Yeah. That's for sure. But the week before, like we said, the Penguins got busy, starting with JSD. Actually, no, this is not an order, sorry. But they signed JSD to a one-year $650,000 contract. Sorry, we're in my apartment, so there's going to be some some cars that are going by. Live from Mount Washington. Yeah, live (laughs) from Mount Washington. We are unfortunately not in the WPPJ radio (laughs) station right now. Hopefully we'll get back into there late August, early September. But we started with JSD. He signed a one-year contract. We re-signed two young players that played a little bit in the uh, NHL level. That's Daniel Sprong and Dominic Simone. My boy Sprong's back for a couple more years, and hopefully he will actually play this time. Uh, at the end of the <laughs> season, Rutherford did say yeah. he expects Sprong to be an everyday player in the lineup, which would be nice. It would be nice. Finally give him some exposure instead of just, hey, here's a couple of games, shoot your which, shot. That, for, that quote from Rutherford is the reason I never believe. Everybody was saying maybe Kunitz comes back. I and they were in talks. I didn't want Kunitz. If, if, Sprong, if Sprong was not going to be up here, yes, I want Kunitz. Because mm-hmm. I want Kunitz to play with Crosby and Gensel, because that's a great line. 
But at the same time, if Sprong comes up, Sprong can't be a third or fourth liner. You need him in a top six role. As much as I hate to say it. Yeah. Because I hate just throwing kids in that position that haven't been there long and trying to, and telling them they have to thrive, but he won't be good as a third or fourth liner in the NHL. He needs to be on that first or second line with Malkin or Crosby. I think Malkin would be the better fit for yeah. him. I mean, because I mean, he only played with Crosby, I think. He Yeah, he did not much, touch the line yeah. with Malkin. So I would like to see him tr- to give him a shot with Malkin just to like see how the dynamic plays out because we obviously don't know now. Um, seeing how the two compare together would be nice. We know he can play with Crosby, but let's just see what he can do everywhere else. Even if he, even if Broussard steps his game up on the third line, and who else could he play with on the third line? Because we got studs all over the place. The third line could be a powerhouse. You never know. Yeah, Daniel Sprong. The only problem is Daniel Sprong being right wing. The Penguins are. Fairly stacked when it comes to right wings, that's that's for sure. Especially uh, since they signed one low-key that I'm very happy about. We'll talk about that later. But we also, there was one more person that they signed that week. And it was the biggest contract they've signed all week. Oh, wait. Second biggest contract they've signed all week. And that would be to Brian Russ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got the four-year 3.5. Rusty, I know uh, our, our friend Dom Davis is very happy about that. We're getting a lot of shout-outs on this first summer episode of 3PT. Yeah, Dom Davis is very happy about that. Four years, 3.5 mil for Rusty. Kind of like, kind of if Sean Rod wasn't bad for the Pirates, he would be the Sean Rod of the Penguins. He's just, he he plays all of it. He got penalty kill, he got left wing, right wing, he can play anywhere for you. He can play top six, bottom six, anything. And I think that was one of the things, when I looked at the list of restricted free agents and unrestricted free agents, we had one. We had one UFA and he's gone. Uh, Rest in peace, Carter Rowney. But... (laughs) Brian Rust was the must sign, yeah. in my opinion. Out of them all, if you had to pay one person, it was going to be Rust. Because we can do, not we can do without Alexiak, but like, we have cover for Alexiak. We have be. cover. That Defense is the one place I would like to see a little bit more depth going forward. Yeah. I would like them to add a little bit more defense, just because we'll talk about it a little bit later. I don't like to, I don't like to push too much down the line, but defense is definitely, we have six good players right now there, but I would like another seventh or eighth defenseman right so those that was the week before free agency so that was fun also in the week before free agency there was a trade and boy (laughs) was it disrespectful we traded sir matthew hunwick who we acquired last year at free agency man did we overpay him (laughs) uh yeah that was that was a waste of money and then also connor sherry Two-time Stanley Cup champion. All, I've seen the videos of yes of him scoring in Game 2 against the Sharks in overtime. Top cheddar. Goal. Game winner. Game. I was at that game. That was, that was cool. A, I was. I had looked at a, at a <laughs> street pole during that game because I was outside and outside. I got there late. Yeah. So, but yeah, we traded both of them to Buffalo. So I was like, oh, for, for what? And they said, a pick. And I said, oh. Uh, a uh, singular pick. Okay. A pick. Give me and a And then year. they were like, yeah, we'll give we'll give you. I was like, I need a year. I need a, a round. And. And it's next year, so okay. cool, early payoff. Cool, I'm like, my first thought going to this was... Conditional, and I was like, okay, so first if they're good, second if they're bad. But... I'm, exactly, I hear that, and I'm thinking, the Sabres aren't going to do that much this year. Yeah, they got Darlene. Okay, it's his first year. He's a rookie, and Eichel's still a head case. Yeah, so they're probably not going to be that great this year. We got a good pick coming in. Oh, wait, it, it's the fourth round pick? It's a fourth round pick with conditional third round, so it's going to be a fourth round pick... Sorry, Buffalo fans. Uh, it's going to be a fourth-round pick. Well, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a slap in the face. Well, hey. Two players that were on the NHL roster were worth a fourth-round pick. But, hey, cap space opened up for... Holy crap. Yeah, they that cleared out $5.3 million cap space. That did, which was nice. Which, guess what we spent it on? And then we spent it on a 31-year-old defenseman from Columbus. Technically, that, covers, that, that trade covered all of our free agents. 100%. Um... Yeah, so let's get into free agency. Uh, yeah, John Tavares to Toronto, cool. Uh, a little bit before free agency, which I'm not sure how that works out. Ilya Kovalchuk came back to the NHL and went to your Kings. I think we could, I think it works out because he was never under an NHL contract, so he wasn't place. technically so, a free agent. Like they could, LA could have signed him at any point. Quarter, really, sort of like how Shipyshev signed with Vegas last year. Yeah, yeah okay, could have signed at sense. any point. It was just. So yeah, free agency was nice. Ian Cole, Ian Cole making it to Colorado. The but, best uh, tweet I saw of Ian Cole signing was of Getty Malkin's ego. Like quoted the update that he was going to going to Colorado for four point whatever is. 
Getting a defenseman at the at free agency is like buying a beer at a concert. Yeah, it's just boy, it's it's pricey. It's because there's not many quality defensemen. There's not, and people need them. There is a shortage in quality defensemen, so I think I should try to play hockey again and try to learn just, defense <laughs> and see if my five foot eight butt can make it. See, I'm just skate backwards, poke check. Yep, yeah, uh, yeah I, I wish it was only that. <laughs> but free agency for the Penguins, yeah. GM Grim Rutherford was pretty busy yesterday. He made two big deals. As in, two deals for people that we know are going to be on the NHL roster. But then, there was another tweet later in the day that he signed four people. Yeah. <laughs> they just threw that in. Did not even matter. He just signed four people. Um, and three of them were returning, Penguins. And one of them was so underrated, and I think would be a great player this year. He's six foot frickin' five. He plays on the uh, right wing. Yeah, well. But he, he could also probably... I'm sure he would not mind trying to move the left wing. I sure hope so. And seeing how it goes. <laughs> and that that's we're, that's Jimmy Hayes we're talking about. He Jimmy had a couple Hayes. bad seasons lately, but he had a really good season a little while ago with the Florida Panthers. Yeah. His breakout year, he had 30-some points. What I liked about that sign is it was a name I had heard of out of those guys. It's a, it's a <laughs> name that has NHL experience, which yeah. is always like... That's something in free agency. If you sign a bunch of guys that have no names, okay, cool, they might develop and come up. But there's a, here's a guy that's been in the NHL. He's played in the NHL, and last year he played for New Jersey, and yes, he struggled a little bit off the bat, but that's the problem. He was a size guy that struggled to score on a team that was young, fast, and loved scoring. So I, especially when Patrick Maroon and Michael Grabner went there, there was no space for him. Hence the reason that he was, he was yeah. benched. So I think don't sleep on Jimmy Hayes. I think that was the move of the day by Jim Rutherford. Definitely not the uh, most beloved by fans. <laughs> Uh, moved of the day, that would be the return of the great number seven. Your Padre. Dad! Dad's back. Daddy's home, as the Penguins put it on their Twitter, and I was kind of... Ugh, they already made two of those movies. Yeah, that was... And those movies were not good. Not really. They had John movie. Cena. The, one, the second one had John Cena. They though. both had technically John Cena. He was in the, he was I only the, saw the second one. He, he was in the, 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 the like trailer scene at the oh. end. But Okay. Yeah, they signed Matt Cullen to a one-year $650,000 contract. Do you remember last year when they said, Matt Cullen's going home to play his 20th and final season? Because I did. Remember when he signed with us before we won a cup saying, he's coming for his final season here. One well, more year. Well, we got one more year. It's six at the bare minimum. Might as well just pay him a pair of socks and his jersey. But uh, I, I don't understand this one personally. It's good. I'm okay with it. I, it's We just didn't need it. We did. We did need it. I will tell you why we needed it. Go ahead. Sir Horwat. We needed it because Derek Broussard played 30 seconds of penalty kill with the Senators before he got sent to us. Riley Shan cannot play two minutes straight of penalty kill for the 10 penalties we take a game. <laughs> okay, that's fair. You're right about that. We needed a penalty-killing center because I don't want Broussard on the kill. Do you? No, not really. Not and Matt Cullen, and what he said yesterday, Rutherford, Cullen can play center. Cullen can play wing. Shane yeah. can play wing. And Broussard can play wing. So now we have three centers in the bottom. <laughs> we had that last year, kind of. Yeah. With Carter, with Carter Rowney. Yeah, with Carter Rowney could do that. But. I will take... So we're basically traded up from Carter Rowney to Matt Cullen. That's the way I'm looking at it. And Carter Rowney didn't get any playing time. Carter Rowney had three goals and seven assists. Is that all season? All career. I'm I was going to say, because sure. that, that pretty much sounds like... I think t- he has like five goals, nine assists in his career. That's... Because I looked at it when Anaheim signed him today, and they had it, and they're both in the single digits, and I was like, oh, Carter... Okay, because I feel like cause he had one very good year, or one very good playoff, sorry, which is the 2017 year, and that's all he had riding for him going in, that he couldn't capitalize on it this past year. Yeah, he just, he, he was injured a little bit, too. That definitely <clears throat> hurt him. That's the reason JSD came up and played five games uh, in the middle of the year, which I think JSD is a capable center. As a fifth center, I said that when we signed him, but now he's the sixth center. So I'm really comfortable with our center depth. Toronto, I don't want to know what... I don't care what you say. We have better center depth. <laughs> don't try to compare Nas to Broussard. Yeah. I'm sorry. But we signed those two, and then, oh, the whopper that we already mentioned a little bit. Jack Johnson, 
Five years, three point two five million dollars. I'm glad it's not super Perfect. expensive. Three point two isn't bad for the original numbers. The week of, I was seeing up in the four point fives. Yeah, that's so. What I when I saw three point five, I said, "Okay, that's it's better. It's better." Or three point two five. Sorry. Yeah. So it's even better. I don't mind this at all. Like I'm actually, people are upset about it because they're like, "You're paying an over the hill player that doesn't even play well." La, 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 and they said all of Rutherford's comments la- last night were just him trying to justify a bad signing. I mean, I don't. This guy was the number one defenseman for Columbus for how long? Yeah, and so he's shown that he can do it. He's physical. He's big. Do you guys want Jamie Alexiak back? Yeah. Okay. If you want Jamie Alexiak back, we're getting Jack Johnson, which is somebody that's done it better for longer. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you people will say over the hill. He's thirty-one. You know who else is thirty-one? Sidney Crosby. <laughs> He's going he's gonna to be, Crosby's going to be 31. Malkin's already 31. Flurry. Hey, the guy that was in the finals. <laughs> need I remind you? We're not yelling at you. It's just we have a crappy recorder. I really hope it so sounds like we're just yelling. I hope it, I, if it sounds like we're just yelling, we, we're just making sure you guys can hear us. 100%. The next episode will at least sound better. Just let this one go for what it is. We can't hear ourselves either. The next episode will probably not sound better. We're probably going to be on the same recorder. Well, whenever I say sound better, I mean we'll be yelling. Yeah, we can fix that. <laughs> But, but <laughs> all right. Either way, um, yeah, the, I like the Jack Johnson signing. A lot of people are ups, upset about it, but it'll grow on me. I know it will. W- once you see him lay some lay out Ovi in the first game, yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody's everybody hated the Reeves signing. Everybody it was a hundred percent screw Ryan Reeves when we signed him. The then, first time he got into a fight because somebody sneezed on Crosby, half of the fan base went to Ryan Reeves. The other half didn't go back, o- didn't go over. There was a and small cool, little you po- stuck to your guns, but there was a large <laughs> portion of people that were like, ha, "He threw a punch. I like him." There was a small portion of people that were also like, "He's taking seventy-five, and he even said that was Mean Joe Green's number." I like where this is heading. Yeah, that was good. And then his first post-game interview with the bucket or with the helmet on, Steelers helmet. I'm excited. What do you think this year's gonna be? Ooh, oh man! Because we had the Spartan helmet in 2017. We yeah. had the Steelers helmet in 2018. That was this past year. What did they have before? Oh, they had the Pirate helmet the year before that. They, yeah. yeah. At one point, they had a Pirate helmet. They had a Pirate helmet at some point. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure. Actually, I'm pretty sure the the Spartan helmet was in 20. It was the second cup year, 16, 17. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't matter. I'm rambling. Sure um, rambling on that. But yeah, like I said, I like the Jack Johnson deal. We'll have to see. Obviously, he's good friends with Crosby. Yeah. And that what, made it. That made a difference. It's probably why he took a discount to play here. What people are, have been getting on is that he is that he wasn't getting playing time in Columbus. He, there were issues off the ice that people refused to mention. No, 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 you don't know. You're from three hours away. Oh, need uh, need us to remind you. John Tortorella went off yesterday, so I'm gonna imagine all of you listening know that John Tortorella went off. But I, I have the quote here from exactly what he said because. He was responding to Jack Johnson saying, I'm just excited to play in a winning environment. And he's not wrong. He's playing in a winning environment. He's, he's, he went to a team that's won two Stanley Cups in the last three years. So, yeah, technically we're, we're definitely more than a winning environment than the Blue Jackets. And I saw somebody say today, well, maybe he didn't mean that. Maybe he meant a championship environment because Columbus, you haven't won a playoff series. Now, that's a very hot take way to put it let's be honest columbus would have gotten swept in their in, the, in their playoff round if holtby would have started <laughs> yeah they took advantage of philip grubauer yeah which is what you're supposed to do but but tortorella it was it was that comment and then it was the comment of rutherford saying that it, he wasn't being benched because of play because of his play he was being benched because of some other reasons that he won't have his problems here yeah there's total off ice stuff that Columbus was just dealing with wrong. So So I'm going to try to keep this as clean as I can. Um, so we're going to get... This is John Tortorella on the comments of Jack Johnson and Jim Rutherford yesterday. Quote, All I know is this organization from the lawyers, the front office, JD, meaning John Davidson, the managers, the coaches, players, has done nothing but try to help Jack, and for him to backhand slap us like this is utter bullshit. And we and he should know better. He went on to say, quote, No one wishes anything bad to happen to him and his family. We wish him the best, but for him to put it the way he put it is bullshit. And to have a general manager question our decision making from three hours away, he must be a effin' magician. Now, by keeping it clean, I meant not saying the F word because, you know. 
We're not on radio. We can kind of swear here. I'm pretty sure you can say bullshit on the radio anyway. We have to. We need that. We there. there we need, we need that the paper. sign. At we need point, that from paper. Park. I needed. I should have taken a, taken a picture of it. But you'll probably go in and do that. But that's aside from the point. But that was his quote. I saw that, and first of all, it's it's John Tortorella. I'd expect nothing less. Talk about the talk about a head case. John Tortorella will just say wild shit and get away with it. Yeah, it's the whole. I'm not sure why he had to say we wish nothing bad to happen to him and his family. That just makes it sound like you no nobody said that. To start, and nobody would have said that. Who's the second person that or second like people group of people he brought up in that quote though? The lawyers. Yeah. Why, why are lawyers involved? Like. That's how you know it's an off-ice issue whenever lawyers are involved in this. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. It's it just... It's John Tortorella being John Tortorella. And exactly. he said that to an athletic reporter. Um, I, I downloaded the athletic app for about five seconds until I realized you have to pay for it. Yep. That's understandable. Yeah, athletic will take over the world one day. Yeah, I understand why you want to make people pay for it, but I'm not, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't have the money. I'm, I'm a poor college kid. One day we. I'm like, I'm One day I might. I, I also downloaded DK Sports and, and subscribed to them for a good month last summer. I was gonna say how'd that go? Yeah, no, I, it was, <laughs> it was three ninety nine. I'll never get back. But that was I. I, I was kind of surprised that he said anything to begin with because I didn't know coaches held press conferences in the off season without like a ton of <laughs> notification about it. Yeah, he just went off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it was even a press conference. I think he just. It was probably just like an interview or something. He, he trying, probably just yeah. called the knowing Torts. Yeah, you're right. As much as I know him from being just a fan, not ever meeting him. <laughs> by the way, I feel like he would have been there, saw that, and he would have just called a reporter and been like, "F this," and yeah. then there's a story. <laughs> it's either that or he tried to like force his way into the force his way into the dude's writing office. Without, <laughs> yeah, I throw back to that whenever I, he tried to do that. Wow, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's free agent wrap up. Jack Johnson, Matt Cullen, Jimmy Hayes, and a bunch of other people, including Zach Trotman, who has played a couple games with the Penguins. Yeah, as a defenseman, maybe he develops. Maybe that's why we're not saying anything about the defenseman, and they're not looking at Jamie Alexiak. Maybe they trust him to be a good seventh, eighth man. Who knows? You never know. I mean, we do still have Rui under for a year, who I enjoy. My. He's my baldy. I love Chad Ruedel. He's but, your baldy. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that being said. That being said, we move on to Jamie Alexiak, actually. he was He's an RFA still. Uh, there's two big RFAs that they still need to do something with. That would be uh, Tristan Jari and Ch- Jamie Alexiak. Jamie Alexiak's last contract he signed, starting with Dallas. Three years... 1.37 mil a year. I would say that's very affordable. That, for who he is and what he did. The Penguins yes. currently have $2.88 million in cap space, according to CapFriendly.com. Yeah, a lot of that is locked up in defensemen, too. Now that I'm thinking about it. The, yeah. But. Yeah. Jack Johnson signing, by the way, that made him our fourth highest paid defenseman. Because he's behind Latang, Dumoulin, Mata. Fifth. Schultz. Schultz. Schultz is getting paid more than him. So he's, a, he, he's our uh, fifth highest paid defenseman. Can I just say one thing? I don't like Mata's contract, going back to it. $4 million? <laughs> oh, my. He had a career year last year, though. He did. and But it's just, I was thinking about, like, he, we signed him long term when we when he signed that contract. Yes, it was very long term. But Wow. Imagine, <laughs> that, like, last year he played well in the second pair. Yeah, yeah. I would say you don't sign Jack Johnson to this deal without having him at least in the second pairing. No, totally. So you can put Mata in a third pairing, and his matchups, he's going to look even better. Whew. Good old Mata Ruweedle. Okay, I'm cool with that. Yeah, him in a third pairing matchup with like third and fourth lines, I think that is bodes very well for the boys in black and gold. I mean, Mata could still unhitch the load every now and again, but if he's, uh, if he's playing a third line role, he doesn't have to as much. Yeah, that's true as well. <laughs> So, I would say, honestly, I say max Jamie Alexiak, probably 1.5 is what I would pay for him. Yeah. But to all you big rig fans, I'm sorry I don't see him signing with the Penguins. I could, I wouldn't be surprised since we didn't already offer him a contract. I would max it out. I mean, how much space do we have? Two something? 2.88. But Rutherford wants to make a trade. I would say, I could see us signing him for two max, but making a trade with it. Or making a trade somewhere to... Give some breathing room. 
Because they're also talking to Anthony Duclair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if Duclair. we mentioned that, but well, look, that's a good 22-year-old that had a 20-goal season. I was okay. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, wait, what is what are his stats been looking like? As recently? of right now, uh, from what I see, the two final front runners, which I can't believe that we're still a front runner after what we did yesterday, and have only two point eight million dollars in space. It's us or Montreal. It's us or Montreal. And does he really want to go to the Canadians? Does anyone want to go to Montreal right now? I don't does want to any, go. Does anyone want to go to Montreal or Ottawa in this at this point? Also, what are the odds we still get a Carlson trade in this? We that will. Was a, we will get it. He's gone. He's, there, he's totally out of it. He that. is going to Vegas. Vegas is the one? Okay. Him and Bobby Ryan. Look how much space they have. You're They're right. the only team that could eat both of those and they, just be like, yeah, we can still sign somebody to $20 million a year. And, the, and his name is not James Neal as he just signed with Calgary. Calgary. I didn't want James Neal. Somebody told me we should sign James Neal. I no. said, oh, you're high. Yeah, no, we don't need James <laughs> Neal anymore. But Calgary's got some... Friggin' firepower now. Not him and Johnny G. Sean Monahan. Oh, that's right, Sean Monahan. That's a front line I don't want to mess with. Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk. <laughs> that's a front line I don't want to mess with. Let's hope they can actually win this year. Yeah. So, Jamie Alexiak, do you think he's resigning with the Penguins? I'm in Final answer. Uh, no. No? I don't think he will. No. I don't think he is either, so sorry, Jamie Alexiak fans. From 3PT, it's going to be a no, dog. So... There's one other thing that's been happening all off season that you know people are saying this could be possible, this could be a trade, this could be great for the Penguins. We could get out another really big, good scoring player. Big, not so much figure skating. Yeah, a little bit more. Uh, that'd be Jeff Skinner from Carolina. A lot of people are saying the Penguins might go after him. And yeah, I do remember he was a figure skater before he played hockey. That's right. He carries, though, a $5.73 million cap hit. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, yeah, that's brutal. For somebody who might be a third liner on our team. How many years does he have left? Uh, I'm gonna take, I'll one. let that up right now. What he has one. Oh, okay. Well, then... Okay. Well, what, what, what do you mean? Well, first of all, Carolina can take whatever we give them. They have $20.5 million. <laughs> oh, Carolina. Yeah, y- y'all need to start signing some people. I'm getting worried. Start y'all sign- are going to be like the Pirates. You're just going to oh, have God. a cap space of a million and just spend it on i don't know ski resorts i can't hear the name the word pyres without rolling my eyes anymore hey listen i'm a fan true through and through if we suck we suck but i'm still gonna be a pirates fan it's painful and it's that's why so i'm so painful that's why i'm so happy that this penguins news is coming through because i have something to break up the terror that is watching the pittsburgh pirates sometimes <gasps> but they've won their last two series and they start a series tonight versus la that they will probably get swept in but the Skinner trade, a lot of people are saying Haglin and Jari. First of all, Jari is a restricted free agent. So, yeah. Nothing you so can do about that. we could sign and trade him. I could see that. But that would probably be the move. Yeah. I don't know. If we make this deal, for this to happen, I think we need to also ship them a draft pick. We're gonna, we would have to. And they would also have to retain, I mean, with 20.5, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. They would have to retain salary. Please, that. please retain some of that. Like, not even please. Like, this deal's not happening unless Carolina retains. Question I'm just trying to remember. Is Broussard retained anywhere, salary-wise? Yes. Okay. Vegas. Because <laughs> we couldn't afford him. Okay. And Ottawa didn't want to retain any of his salary. That's why Ryan Reeves went to Vegas, because yeah, yeah. they were That's sending right. us Broussard and retaining salary is the reason we could do that. That's that, that whole jumbo someone crapped in a toilet mixed it up and said here's your trade kind of thing yeah yeah they vegas is paying uh part of broussard so we got i think vegas and ottawa actually i think ottawa took some I of think it ottawa took some. so we have a couple we have, him and kessel are both retained somewhere that we're not even getting full price on somewhere them. kessel's retained in toronto still yeah i know thank you thank you maple leafs congratulations for john Tavares. guess what you're paying Tavares, matthews and kessel and one of them has won two stanley cups without you and guess what? Sorry, I had to do it. That's before Matthew's big boy contract that he still has to write up. Matthew's big boy contract. Nylander's. Mar- Marner's. I think Marner's gone. Nylander's going to stay there. Marner's oh, yeah. Gone. Kapanen's going to need a big boy contract. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. He's hey. a fourth liner. Wait, I, he's going to have a good year this year. I would. You heard it here first, everyone. Don't slam your water bottle I on throw my, my empty floor, water sir. bottle. I've only had this apartment for two week months. <laughs> I've had mine for over a year. So, uh, I'm a Haglund fan, obviously. Um, I would hate to see him leave, but he's been here for three years. His $4 million cap hit would definitely help make this deal work. 100%.
Because uh, then, that, I mean, even if they say we do one for one, I don't know. Just, just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, if they take, if they want that one for one, we only have to pay one point seven three, which fits under yep. our two point eight eight. That's what I was going for. But but they want a goalie because Cam Ward just signed with Chicago. They and they did just pick up Peter Mrazek. Oh, did they? I did not Is see that, that. Who that was? I'm gonna double check that. You continue talking for. Yeah, a I, I know they have Scott Darling, and that didn't work out last year. <sighs> No Cam Ward left. But I could... Haglin for Skinner. If we throw in Jari and throw in a draft pick, I could see it happening. And honestly, I don't know what other big trade Rutherford would be working on. The Carolina Hurricanes are the fifth most cap space in the league right now, by the way. Who's won? Vegas? Uh, Winnipeg. What? Yeah, I'm going to take a look at that in a moment. Yeah, they signed Peter Mrazek. They signed Peter Mrazek. Okay. For a year. And they still have two. Okay. So, Winnipeg has the top. Winnipeg has $27 million in cap space. Who do, who do they have to resign soon? No one. Yeah, Winnipeg's going to be dangerous. What? Well, they also just traded two players to Montreal. Oh, they have a ton. They, have a, oh, they, they have a, traded Steve Mason's contract, which was huge. Yeah. They traded his and Joel Armia's for... Who was it? Did, didn't they get... Did they get Pacioretty? No. No, Pacioretty's still there? I didn't... Patches, Patches is still there. They got pretty much no one out of that. Um, that it was, was a cap dump. Totally, because they still have to sign Jacob Truba, who's going to sign huge. Yeah, that's going to be it. Morrissey that's might sign up. slightly big, because he's young. Yeah. Brandon Tanev might sign decent. And that's it. They're, they're all RFAs, too. Well, also, they lost Paul Stastny. Yeah. Paul Stastny went to Vegas. It's still weird to me. Somebody saying, oh, Vegas signs a free agent. I'm like, wait, they're, they're old enough to have free agents now? And, and it's it being Paul Stasny. I'm like, Paul Stasny's still playing? Hey, Paul Stasny was good last year. For I know he Jets. was, yeah. But, um, no, all of the Jets, everyone that the Jets need to resign are RFAs, including their backup. Yeah. Oh, hell, they need to sign Hellebuck. That's, that's he why they space. He's an RFA. This year. <laughs> Looking at it right now. <laughs> he is going to sign... Connor, you heard it here first. Connor Hellebuck's about to get a pay day. <laughs> he won the Vezina, didn't he? Please tell me he won the Vezina. I don't think he did. Who won the Vezina? Now, see, now we're going back into all of this stuff that I need to look up. Yeah, that's the last one you need to look up. I'm just, I, 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 no, I he don't... deserves the freaking Vezina. I, I don't know why he didn't. Hey, we were all right. Taylor Hall won the MVP. Taylor Hall did win the MVP. We did say that on 3PT. I think episode 7, go back and re-listen to oh, it. Oh, Pekka Rene won it. That's why. Yeah. That's nonsense. Well, no one said the NHL awards were ever smart and ever worked out perfectly. So that's going to do it for our Penguins talk for this week. My phone will open. We might <laughs> come we back in two weeks probably is when we're going to be back on the air. Hopefully there's some Penguins news between now and then or else we're going to have to figure out something else to talk to you guys about. And hopefully it's something interesting other than us just rambling about hockey. Oh, before we just before we started recording this, Tom Kunockle. Signed for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the New York Islanders. We Tom. offered him a contract. We couldn't have offered him less than that. <laughs> so I'm confused as to what we did to Tom Kunal. I'm just waiting for that update to come in on as to what happened because that I was just looking up at Cap Friendly just to see something, and I saw that it was the first thing I saw. That was the top. That was the most, most recent move. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, check everything. Rip Tony Tommy Coon, but uh, yeah. Wow, that's... I couldn't believe that at all, so... Yeah, they signed... Let's just get some confirmation here real quick before we sign off. What, what, what is this? Oh, there it is. That's Tom Kunakel's picture. He got a tweet of his own two hours ago. Did they have uh, anything on there about his term? Or, I mean, we know it's 650. I would imagine it's probably maybe two. Probably should have just pulled up Cap Friendly again, but it's going to load, and you can cut this in editing. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I don't like editing, so I'm not cutting this. Well, I was hearing the <laughs> rambling. Yeah, uh, one year contract. <laughs> you know, he signed for one year, six hundred fifty thousand. What did we offer him? A donut? <laughs> Dude, the Islanders are just signing random people anymore. Oh, th- yeah. they're scrambling. <sighs> they have Matt Barzell. And with that, we say goodbye, Dave Fichetti, and goodbye, <laughs> listeners. That'll do it for the first ever summer episode of Three PT Point Park Pens Talk. Signing off. My name is Nick Berlansky. As always, I'm with Nick Horwat. Have a great day. Have a happy 4th of July, depending on when this goes up. Have a very good 4th of July. I'm hoping it's up by tomorrow, July the 3rd, That'd Judy nice. 3rd. 
And we will maybe get Jordan on the next podcast. If not... He better at least listen to this one. Uh, Jordan the Jobber will not listen. <laughs> so uh, we'll try to get Jordan the Jobber on the next episode. We will see you then. Later, guys.